Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving and you've heard of the after party. Well, this is like that, but rubbish. This is the video that follows the triumphant end of the NEC. We had a fantastic weekend meeting lots of people and uh, seeing lots of amazing cars and indeed fixing the thermostat which had sprung a leak on the uh, 200VI during the show. So I'm running away currently from the Rover Village, the Rover 200, 400 Club. Lovely, lovely people who came through in an emergency and found for me a thermostat for my 200VI. However, at the end of the show, we went to we bled the, uh, the cooling system, or we started to bleed the cooling system, and uh, it was uh, struggling to do it. A little post video, everyone's packing up, the stand is fast disappearing. Uh, Miss Hubner is getting out, but we're stuck with Matt's Rover, he's had to change the thermostat uh, housing. It was cracked, it was leaking coolant everywhere, and now we're struggling to um, bleed the system. I think really we need the car on a wonk to make the expansion bottle the highest point. Right, we all lift? Hey? Yeah, we'll all just lift it up. So, um, an exciting end. It's gone very hubnut for Matt. Sorry? Oh. Oh, he's at the bleed point. Where do we put the screen on? Well, this is a bit worrying, but that's where he's going. Oh no, it's pouring out, it's pouring out the housing. It's absolutely pouring out the thermostat housing, I think. No, no, bad times for Mr. Furious. Bad times, I'm not driving home. No, this is real life, people. Bugger. Because it all suddenly fell out. Now, unfortunately, we don't actually have any tools here. We were borrowing tools uh, to do all the jobs from a friend who has gone home in a different hall, from a different hall, I should say. Um, I can see now, when I squeeze one of the coolant pipes, that there is uh, a gush of coolant from around the thermostat area. So possibly the, we don't know, with the used second-hand uh, uh, borrowed thermostat housing that we acquired from the show, um, is it full, or if the O-rings we bought aren't quite right, or if there's another leak somewhere else. But something isn't right, but now currently we're waiting for Start Rescue to appear out of thin air and magically rescue us. Whether they can fix it in situ, or I'm going home in a lorry, well at least they send me some petrol and nothing else. Um, yeah, we'll find out shortly. But yeah, bear with. Uh, Matt is currently loading up the Tuareg with all the, uh, the show stand that we had here. Um, Ian Hubner and family have vanished off towards Wales, they've got a very long drive. And Steph also off to Yorkshire, she's about four hours in the other direction as well, so she has left us to it. So we can enjoy the charming ambience of a half-stripped NEC. That's something you don't normally get to see, isn't it? The uh, behind-the-scenes business of what happens after you go home from the uh, classic motor show. Okay, so we've had a couple of developments. Uh, the breakdown people turned up, uh, it was only a recovery truck, because I assumed the head gasket had failed and they were towing it home. So he's now left and we're now waiting for an actual roadside assistance truck to turn up. Meanwhile though, one of our neighbours, these guys over here, Scholar Engineering, so thank you Scholar Engineering, have got a K-series on their display and they've got another thermostat housing they've just taken off a display engine. So we've now got an option to repair this. So we're hoping very much to actually have a repair as soon as the recovery truck turns up. Just need tools. We haven't got any tools over here. So the man with tools to arrive and dexterous fingers and we are good to go. So things really have not gone to plan. Um, breakdown people have tried every local roadside repair person and they're all saying it's a very technical difficult job. They're not willing to look at it or even contemplate trying it here at the dark, rainy, cold confines of the NEC because it's very complicated and it's specialist tools and they can't do it, apparently, which is bizarre. So what they've said, they can put me into a hotel for the night. So I, I live here now in Birmingham, apparently, and we're gonna see what happens in the morning. Well, it's now Monday morning. I should be at work by now, but I'm not. I'm still over there. But looking at positives, we're indoors and not in that. But eventually we will be when the breakdown truck turns up. It's it's actually still rather fascinating to see the state of this. This is kind of mid-morning the following day. 
There's a fleet of HGVs have turned up to get all the auction cars out of here, which is absolutely incredible. And so many cars are still here. I'm amazed the number of vehicles still waiting for collection. You have to get out of here by sort of 12 o'clock, 2 at the very latest, because there's another show to start setting up later. The rain has stopped, the sun's come out, and my saviour is here. We actually met this gentleman last night as well, because they sent him round to recover the car. Uh, what time was that? Oh, about seven o'clock or so. But he didn't have very long left on his hours, and they would have been dropping the motorway services and being relayed home. So the hotel option was very nice indeed, but at least he knew exactly where to come this morning. So that was a relief. Right, let's get the car on the truck and then uh, get home. So now I'm finally free of the NEC and off to Mark Gray, a friendly rover specialist in Wolverhampton. And the truck driver even has a classic American pickup truck, so we have plenty to talk about on the way. Well, here we are at, well, we're in the back of the building, so you can't see the sign, MGBD Car Parts. Mark Gray is quite well known in the rover world for fixing, well, we start off with P6s, now apparently doing a lot of other rover stuff as well. It's, uh, we caught him on the hop because he's in the middle of moving workshops at the moment, so hopefully he'll be able to help us out. If you're going to break down anywhere in a Rover, this is a good spot. Mark popped the metal coolant pipe off and we stole a genuine Rover O-ring from the display engine's thermostat to use here. Now the problem we had when we fitted this yesterday was that uh, the pipe, the hard pipe that holds the thermostat in place, the bracket that you bolt it up with didn't really seem very well, in the right place to be honest, but this has wound up with a little nick in it, so that's why it's leaking. And it's going back together. That there is a, a nicely fitted pipe. So fingers crossed this is going to work now. So amusingly, there appears to be coolant running down the block. We can't tell if it's stuff that's previously spilt and it's now just running off, or if it's new leak from somewhere else, which I really, really hope it isn't. So using an airline to just blow it all clean, so not adding more liquid to it. And we can top it up and see what really is real. So this is going to look familiar because Mark is back there looking at that same irritating bolt on the back of it. Turns out the new thermostat is actually leaking, so we've got to take this out and use the new, new other thermostat we've got and hope to God that one doesn't leak as well. This is turning into something of a nightmare. Well, now, it's a little bit later on and we've had to take the thermostat back out again, well, Mark has anyway, because it turns out we've figured out why we didn't get a good seal and why the uh, O-ring was pushed out, because the other O-ring was also damaged by being fitted. It seems that the O-rings we bought at the Auto Jumble were too fat, so when they went in, they just kind of got deformed and then kind of nicked, and so they leaked like crazy. Luckily, the lovely guys at the engineering place, who name I said earlier on, I'll splash it on screen, they gave me this genuine OEM Rover thermostat housing. We stole the O-rings off this, refitted it with that, and it's no longer leaking. Mark is now just tightening all the bolts up, and we can fill it with uh, coolant, bleed it, and finally, I can be home 24 hours later than everyone else. Well, it's a while later, and still on that last bolt, which is a bad thread and will not tighten. Mark has even tried to tap the thread out, but it's very inaccessible and does not want to go in. Mark finishes fighting a bolt, I've been across and bought some coolant so I don't have to flip the water and then flush it when I go home again because that's just be annoying. More annoying than taking 24 hours to go from the NEC. Add that to the list. And it's dry. Right, so now a mere 24 hours after I first tried to leave Birmingham, I'm now leaving Birmingham. I'm putting Wolverhampton behind me at last. But I cannot say a big enough thank you to Mark Gray from MGBD Rover P6 Parts. Mark has been a friend for, it must be 20 years, maybe even longer, um, through the P6 community. And the, the Rover community, I say this all the time, are some of the best people out there. I rung up Mark fairly late last night when I realised that the uh, breakdown service people didn't know which garage to take me to um, because it was just, it's an old car, what do you do with that? And Mark, can I appear on your doorstep sometime tomorrow? He's in the middle of moving workshops so the place is only half furnished and in a massive mess because all the old stuff is being pulled out and piled in boxes and ready to throw away and move somewhere else and yet he's managed to still squeeze me in most of an afternoon, no, really, thanks to a really, really stubborn bolt with a very awkward thread that would not do up at all. Just wouldn't bite. 
we spent, oh, I say we, it was all, it was all Mark, um, well over an hour trying to do one final bolt just to keep that um, hard line of pipe in place and not jettison all my coolant across the floor. All today I've had loads of messages and comments from people saying, I oh, hope you had a great show, hope you got home okay. And I'm just uh, here going, um, well, I had a great show, but I didn't quite make it home. So <laughs> I'm still here, I'm still in Birmingham. I live in Birmingham now. Or well, Wolverhampton technically now. So I'm finally very happy to be on the way out. About a day and a half longer in this town than I wanted to be. But you know, one more night in a chain hotel. This is one of the things where I'm gonna say a tentative goodbye because I hope it is the end of the video because if all goes well, nothing springs a leak, we don't drop any coolant, uh, the temperature remains static where it is on the dial right now, then I won't say any more on this video. It'll all be good. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, all the usual stuff. However, and I'm sure you're really keen for this to happen because then you get some great content out of me, but I'm very keen for it not to happen. I don't want to look left lane, I don't want to look where I'm going. Um, on the M6 apparently. Who knew? Um, yeah, if, if things go horribly pear-shaped, then you'll be hearing more from me in a minute or two. I really hope you won't, because I've already had to blow off one job today when I couldn't make it back to Kent in order to go to work. I don't want to blow off a second day's work thanks to a uh, falling apart car. gaffer tape my window shut because the repair I made just before coming up to Birmingham the back end was fine but the front end the glass dropped out of the uh, plastic clip again so I need to order two new plastic clips basically um, and I've got the window shut with gaffer tape for the moment so fingers crossed it doesn't rain too much and the gaffer tape holds out the entire way home if it rains too much I might be in trouble So yeah, this is now the end of the video, unless the window drops into the door, which could happen. Like this, this is what will take the gaffer tape off my window, and I've got more in the boot, but I have literally no idea where, so please stop raining on me. Uh, probably chasing after the Volvo I just saw doing some incredibly bad driving down the dual carriageway in the opposite direction. Um, three hours and about 180 miles down to Kent. I've pulled off just to double check the car in some street lights. This temperature gauge has not moved the entire way. Let's just pull the bonnet and check we've not lost, loosed, lost any fluid. The engine is still ticking over quite nicely. This thing is such a nice car to drive, it really is. Yeah, we've barely moved a centimetre on that tank, it's just sitting on the middle line again, so that's all good. So I'm going to assume then that we are still dry. So, there we have it. The Rover is saved and fixed, not stranded in Birmingham anymore after five whole days. <sighs> that is how I ended my NDC Classic Motor Show 2023 in a workshop in Wolverhampton with an old friend, thankfully, putting the car back together again. As always, like and subscribe, and I'm going to go home and finally get some sleep, because it's actually almost 10 o'clock at night now. So, <laughs> more than 24 hours home from the NEC. Right, good night, everybody. Mm -hmm.